Good evening, good evening, church family. It's a privilege to be here with you. Welcome. If this is your first time here, welcome. So happy to be, that you're here with us, with me, for us to pray together. I'm here using today my, my t-shirt. It takes three double A's to make this one run, this bright. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but I'm happy. Uh, we don't need batteries. We need this connection with God to keep us not only alive, but to keep us thriving in life and to have energy to live uh, despite of everything we suffer, despite of everything we face uh, in life. Uh, today we're going to start taking a look into Psalm 89. Why start taking a look? For a simple reason. This is a big psalm, okay? Psalm goes like 51 verses. So this is one of the psalms that we're going to split into couple of different moments but it will be good to start today taking a look in this hymn of God's kingship it's it's the declaration of God's who he is how big and amazing he is and that's why I'm so happy that you are here for us to have this, this moment celebrating this God as a king and why he is the king why should we declare him the king of our life why should we accept him Let's say, that, let, why should we accept him as the king of our life? And I want to pray with you before we read the first 18 verses of this one chapter. I think it is 18 that we're going to go through today. And then later on, we will read the other portions. The other two portions will be next week and the other week as well. But let's pray before we go through this beautiful Psalm 89. Dear God, thank you. Thank you so very much for bringing us together to celebrate you, celebrate your kingship. And Lord, today we want to accept and celebrate that, but help us to understand the beauty of your love, your unfailing love, the beauty of your justice and how you want us to, to be blessed and for us to live well. But I know that some of us, we come here struggling, so... And we all struggle, Lord. We all struggle to understand you, to, to try to grasp what you're doing. But help us, Lord, as we look into your word. May your Holy Spirit open that space in our hearts for us to understand who you are. Please be here with us. All of these blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go today. Psalm 80. Nine and, and, and the psalm, it's, it's so amazing. It starts with this beautiful praise to God. Praise God, the King. Let me bring up the screen over here. Let me see if I can do that. I need to click here. A couple of clicks. And there you are. There we have the Bible. Let me see if I can bring this even a little bit better here. There you go. I'm, I want to read today in the voice message. It starts with like this little disclaimer. Psalm 89 begins with a note of praise and ends with a lament. But it ends praising God. Uh, the heart of this psalm recalls God's choice of David as a king and God's covenant with him to establish an, an eternal dynasty. And we will see more about that. So let's take a look here. First two verses. The praise to the God who is also a king. I think it's, it's readable, right? I hope the letter is that big for you to read that. Uh, but if you cannot read, just, just go along with me here. I'm going to read for you this beautiful psalm. Or open your Bible. That's also uh, something amazing you can do. Just open your Bible and read by yourself. Verses 1 and 2 say, I will sing of your unfailing love. This word is bring. <laughs> We've been seeing this unfailing love, which is the word has said, which is this love that never ends, that never fails. Uh, so I will sing of your unfailing love, eternal one, forever. I will speak of your faithfulness to all generations. In verse 2, I will tell how your unfailing love will always stand strong and how your faithfulness is established in the heavens above. It's a beautiful start for, for the psalm is this explanation. That it gives us the theme. The theme of this one portion that we're reading today, uh, especially of, of this one psalm, uh, is 
is praise of the acts of law, the God's great love. The future lies in God, who himself has established his love and faithfulness in heaven itself. So heaven already knows that. Heaven already lives that. Uh, uh, so we can understand that this God will reign forever and he will be established forever. So that's why the psalm starts with this beautiful praise, uh, showing God's love and talking about God's love, but not only about that, his faithfulness throughout the generations. Let's go here to the second part, God's fidelity to David. So just in this first portion, we will see that God has something to do with this man, right? It was not perfect, but it was someone that truly accepted God's power, God's uh, uh, God as a ruler. So verses 3 and 4. So this is God's fidelity to David. So let's take a look here in the second part. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I made my servant, David, this promise. So here he comes, the promise God made to David. I will establish your dynasty so that you and your descendants will always be secure. Your rule will continue for generations to come. So God is made in here a pledge. That pledge was not done right there, but that pledge was made to David. And, and here we have uh, this God again reinforces why God chose David by his love. Why God will keep his covenant with David because of his faithfulness so those praises that we saw in the beginning right in the second in the second portion or the second two verses we will see exactly that the relationship between david and the lord was guaranteed by the covenant berit made by oath god will always be faithful to his pledge so if god promised he will make it and in this dynasty, remember that Jesus was part of David's family. So God truly will come true. This faithfulness truly will show up in a more perfect way when God, when Jesus died on the cross for us and God truly went through and he was faithful to his covenant, even by the cost of his own life. But praises don't come just from the earthlings. Praises, they come from heaven. And this is what we're going to see here from verses 5 all the way to verses 8. Let's take a look. Let the heavens join in praising the wonderful works of the eternal. The holy ones have gathered singing your faithfulness. The, the, uh, the beauty of the, the original language, it calls like, let the heavens join and let the sons of God Join, but that sons of God is not like people from here; it's people from the heaven. So, so the language gives the that that understanding. The holy ones have gathered, singing your faithfulness, for there is no one above who compares to the eternal. Not one of heaven's creatures is like him, in the least. In the council of the holy ones, God is lifted high and feared. His presence overwhelms all who are near Him. And then verse 8, and in the section here, this part, O eternal God, commander of heaven's armies, who is mighty like you? You are completely faithful. That's why we trust you. I think it's beautiful, the language here, because even though it praises God, heavens is praising God, for his mighty, here comes like, why? It's not because of his power, but because of his faithfulness. That's why we trust in you. It's not because of what God can offer us. It's for who he is. And it states clearly that this God is faithful. So so we don't, and, and this, is, this helps us to not to create false expectations to God, thinking that God is kind of like a genie, that if we rub in certain ways, He will answer to our prayers? No. Like we praise God for who He is, and we know that He's fair. We know that He's faithful. We know that He wants to end with sin, that He's fighting to end with sin. So 
and he will fight it and justice will be done at the end like complete justice so truly we praise god not because of his answers or how he will he will come and attend to our prayers no we praise god for who he is and he's amazing and that's so beautiful so they praise god for who he is we know he's loving and faithful and then what we will see now is that not only the heavens praise God, that this God has this universal rule. And under this universal rule, there's more things that they will bring praise to God. So let's go here, verses 9 to 13. The ocean waters are at your command. When violent waves rise up, you still them so who's in control here right of the the oceans you defeated rahab that ancient monster of chaos and left it lifeless and and here's like it's it's bringing myths of the time rahab it's kind of like the leviathan it's a monster from the sea so the monster of chaos and it left it lifeless it's almost like making a reference to to uh it's one of the ideas that they had of, of pagan gods and say, man, even pagan gods, like your gods are nothing. You routed your enemies and scattered them by your great arm of power. Everything in the sky above and in the earth below are yours. The world and all in it contains are yours for you created them all. Everything was created by you. The north, the south, the mountains of Tabor and Hermon echoed joyously the song of your name. Your arm is strong and your grip is powerful. Your right hand is raised up high. Even the mountains are praising God. And there are two mountains here uh, that are sound. Uh, Yahweh's power, God's power is unlimited at the sea, in heaven and on earth. His love, again, this, unf this word has said comes up, is the unfailing love extends both to creation and to the messianic kingdom represented by David. So not only all the things on this earth, they will receive the blessings of God's love, but also this throne established by David will be also a demonstration of God's love. And again, this is a mention of, of God's power. I want to bring here a picture for, for us. It's a beautiful picture from those mountains. It's a beautiful picture from the mountains. Those, there are two mountains that they are referred particularly here. One of them is Mountain Hermon and Mountain Hermon is it's located to the north, the, the northernmost tribe. It was located in the tribe of Dan and reaches an altitude of around 9,000 feet and has an abundant, it's an abundant, this mountain is an abundant source of water uh, and streams and there are beautiful waterfalls in that region that is north of Israel. And, and, and south, when we go southwest, 50 miles, there is the Mount Tabor. Beautiful in its own self, 1,900 feet. So it's not as high as Mount Hermon, but it nevertheless is, is majestic in its own geographical landscape. So this mountains together, I brought the picture so you guys can see that uh, it's beautiful how the psalmist brings this this idea that everything nature is also praising god and if nature and heavens are praising god we should join in this praise and that's why this last portion is all should praise the lord verses 14 all the way to 18. your role is rooted deeply in justice and righteousness unfailing love and truth lead from the way ahead of you how happy are those who have learned how to praise you those who journey through life by the light of your face every hour of the day they rejoice at the sound of your name they are lifted up and encouraged by your righteousness for you are the beauty of their strength on account of your favor our strength our horn is 
increased. For our shield of protection comes from the Eternal. And the Holy One of Israel has given us our King. Even though the psalmist sees that they have an earthly king, the earthly king, they know that God is the one who established kingdoms. God is the one who brings kings and takes kings. And he knows that. The subjects of Lord's rule thrive under his administration. They are blessed and join with the whole creation, heavens and earth, in praise of this God who brings up salvation. I think this is a beautiful, beautiful psalm. It, it teaches us that we should be praising this God no matter the circumstance. There is a God in command that is a God in control. And even though sometimes we feel like things are going on here on this earth, we need to understand that one day this, this is a faithful God. This is a loving God. And, and one day he will end with all the terror, all the unrighteousness, all the un... This is like my kids, they say, this is not fair. Yes, it's not fair. And one day God will end with all unfairness, all the pain and all the suffering. I want to invite you to prayer. If there's anything taking away from you, this idea of God's fairness of God's justice. If, if there is any suffering in your life or in the life of your people right now, please write in the comments and I want to pray for you. I want to also invite you to pray for our church. Don't forget, we've been praying as we open our, as we wake up, the first thing we ask in the morning, say, Holy Spirit, come and establish this kingdom in my heart. We've been asking this week in a very specific way. The first prayer when we wake up, when consciousness comes to our mind is to invite the Holy Spirit to be the ruler of, of our hearts, to be the ruler, the king, the one who has his kingdom established in our hearts. Uh, and I want to ask you to pray for a couple of families in our church. Pray, Keep praying for the Santiago family. This is one of the prayers that I want to, to dedicate some today. Uh, uh, Santo Santiago, which is an elder of our church, he is in a hospital. Uh, it's the third time in this last two weeks that he's there. And truly, like, the family is suffering a lot. And, you know, it's, it hurts when you see someone you love suffering. If you have someone that you love suffering, write down in the comments. We want to pray for them as well. And I want also to pray for the Almanya family for comfort. They just lost uh, one of its member members, uh, and and its wife, a uh, mom. So let's not forget to pray for the family Almanya as well. And if you have any other prayer requests, so Holy Spirit, the Santiago family, and uh, the Almanya family. But let's keep praying for each other. Take a look here in the comments. And, and we will pray for one another. Okay? So let's pray. Dear God, we come to you, Lord, as the Creator. As the one who gives the beating of our hearts. As the Creator of the mountains, of the plains, of rivers, and the Creator of waters. Uh, we, we want to trust in you, Lord, so much. Your faithfulness. We can, we can be sure that night will come. But after the night, the sun will come. Because... Of your faithfulness all those rules all those laws set up in time and you you make sure that everything works perfectly lord under those rules uh unfortunately lord we live in this world that sin made a a dwelling in this world and it brings suffering it 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 somehow we got in between us and and seeing your beauty but we still can see a lot of your beauty in the things you created lord so help us, Lord, to look up for the praises that your creation brings to you. Help us to join into the, with the heavenly beings in praising you for your faithfulness and your unfailing love, Lord. That's why we come to you boldly in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The one that in his life, death, resurrection, and soon return demonstrates how faithful and how just you are, Lord. 
So that's why, Lord, we come to you because you're the, you're the best place we can go. Enjoying your presence, enjoying you, Lord, your being. Not the things you can give to us, but your being. It has strengthened our hearts and our souls, helping us to look to the future with hope. So please be with us. And that's why, Lord, for who you are, not how you will respond. It's because of who you are. We come to you, Lord, bringing our brokenness, bringing our suffering, Lord. And that's why we want to place in your hands the Santiago and the Almania family. All those families asking here, Lord, please be with them. Be with us. Let us place it. Be with us, Lord. We need you in, our, in the midst of our suffering. We need you, Lord. Uh, even when things are good, we need you. We need you always, Lord. Help us to enjoy your presence always, Father. Always, also, Lord, be with the families that they are suffering right now as the Omania family representing all of our losses, Lord. We've been having such great losses in our church and in this world and in our family. So be with us. Give us comfort and help us to look to the future, not believing in the lies that suffering and pain are trying to impose to us, but believing that there is a God and even death itself cannot uh, uh, confront, cannot win against this God. So thank you, Lord, for the certainty and the hope and the assurance we have in Jesus Christ. Please be with our church. More than ever, we need the gift of the Holy Spirit, Lord. Be with us. Give us that gift, Lord. We trust in you and your love. And that's why we ask for such important and essential gift for our life. Opening our minds to understand you. Opening our hearts to check and to see the times we're living. And to get ready to soon and very soon to meet with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Be with us. And one more time, Lord, we praise you. We praise you for your unfailing love and for your faithfulness that never ends and it will last forever and ever and we saw that all in jesus christ that's why we pray in the name of our intercessor our savior and our lord that soon will come back to take us home we pray in jesus name amen church family may god bless you may god be with you don't forget he, his love is unfailing and he will be forever faithful. You can trust in him. May God be with you. Don't forget, tomorrow we have at 7.30 our Bible study, The Truth. Okay, We've been looking into the Bible and how we can trust in the Word of God. And we'll see tomorrow we'll take a look into very archaeological evidences on why we can trust and why we can believe in the Word of God and give the Word of God its due importance, okay? Super kiss! Never forget, I love you, but He loves you more. Bye-bye. Have a great night.